U.S. citizen returning to the United States in the previous 14 days will be subject to up to 14 days of mandatory quarantine. Content that it may contain. This program may contain explicit language and mature subject matter discussion. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Parental discretion is advised. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very, that was very official. Uh, welcome to the quarantine call-in show. And we have the, the regulars on, myself, Laura Grant, Timothy Lovett, and Kim DeShields. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Hey. What's up? Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little mellow tonight. Uh, we have a special guest this evening. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I should describe, uh, explain what's going on tonight so that the people that have seen the show know there's just a little twist, a little different twist tonight. So we've got uh, a special guest, uh, Brooke Norton, who is a therapist specific, specifically in relationship and sexuality, uh, who is our special, special guest. And we are inviting all of you in today, but you may not be able to speak in the room until perhaps 20 to 30 minutes in, just so that we can interview and get, let you get to know Brooke before all the questions come. Does that make sense to everybody? Not yes. Okay, <laughs> Charles says yes. yes, all right. Good, so so welcome Brooke. Thank you so much for coming and joining us this evening. Thank you for having me, I'm so excited to be here. It's an honor to have you. And um, just so we know that your, your therapy uh, practice is in Florence, Massachusetts, correct? That's right. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about what sex therapy is? I mean, uh, what sure. does sex therapists do? So, um, Sex therapists do um, regular talk therapy that you that most people think of. I mean, if if you haven't been in therapy yourself, then you might have seen a show like The Sopranos or um, other other shows that depict people going to therapy or being involved. You know, talking with the therapist back and forth. The only difference is that sex therapists have received special training in gender, sexuality, relationships, um, and some, some, you know, if they're really good, they've gotten some other training of, of some even more outside of the dominant culture kind of issues. Um, yeah, it's, it's talk therapy. It's, um, it's, you know, we, we, we work with people about how they're feeling about themselves and their relationships. Great. So um, how does it work? You're saying it's talk therapy. And I guess before I ask you how it works, I just wonder, what are the common things that you see in your office? What are the issues that come in? Often? Mm -hmm. um, I work with, well, first of all, I work with couples and I work with individuals. And uh, sometimes I've worked with people who have multiple relationships, polyamorous relationships, my office is not that big, so I can't handle more than like three clients at a time. Um, and I've also done some family work. Um, so uh, people are coming in mostly with either sexual issues that they are having with themselves inside of their own mind and heart, or they're having some sort of interpersonal issues with their partner or partners. Um, things that seem really hard to talk about that they need assistance and that's that's my role to kind of guide the conversation keep everyone calm at the same time and uh, yeah just let's talk so from my own uh, perspective I know uh, trauma I work in trauma and mm -hmm. I have my own history of trauma and I, I know that that's a big drive for somebody to come in there's a connection uh, to, from trauma to sex therapy, not necessarily always sexual trauma, any kind of trauma. Mm, what other yes. things, what other things do you see come in if you can talk a little specifically? Yeah. So, um, I do want to say that trauma takes up about a third of my practice, maybe, well, depending on who I'm working with, it could be either be up to a half about of my caseload people with trauma. Um, and that can 
manifest in a number of ways. People might want to be having a lot more sex. People want, might not want to have any sex. Um, people might be wanting to be intimate and have sexual encounters with their partners, but having some trouble with that. Um, so, you know, I have, I have a framework to work with that. Um, but to answer your question, other issues, the, the most common thing I see is that um, in a couple, one partner wants sex more and the other partner wants sex less. So the fancy, <laughs> fancy word for that is desire discrepancy. Let's but, try to guess who, who is who in that. I'm just kidding. I, I'm just being very uh, gender norming here. Can we yeah, guess? and that's, it's actually never, it, it's, it's half half, uh, you know, really? if, we're, if we're being binary about it. Yeah. Um, oh, and that wow. actually, when, if there's, if I'm working with a heterosexual couple and it's the woman who wants sex more, then that also messes with our gender stereotypes. So, you know, that's, that's also like some rich discussions to be had. Like, what does it mean to be a woman who wants more sex? And what does it mean to be a man who wants less sex? Mm -hmm. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so uh, what are some, I mean, I know maybe there are fetishes that um, I, that's a big issue, I think, around and maybe even more so now that we have such access to pornography like it used to be different, right? You had to go to a store. Now it's all over the internet. Um, so do you find that as getting in the way for some couples or people in general? Uh, well, are we talking about fetishes or are we talking about the availability of porn? Those are two different things. Wow. Okay. Well, pick one. <laughs> we'll take to both of those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so people who have fetishes who um, might be like uh, feeling shame about them and afraid to bring them up in, in their relationships. That's a whole, that's a whole rich topic for discussion. Um, I think the internet has actually helped a lot of people with fetishes to find other people with fetishes and to be like, you know, how, how did this happen? I actually heard a speaker a, a year or two ago about um, fetish identity formation and how it follows like a pretty, a pretty standard pattern. It's really interesting work. Um, I love working with people who have fetishes. They usually are coming in with a deep sense of shame about them and I just help relieve that shame. Um, so the, the other part of that question about pornography and how that might inform someone's sexual encounters, that is a very, yeah, that's, um, there's a lot there. There's a lot to, uh, to talk about there. It's, um, it's interesting. Wow. Do you guys have any questions so far? So I got a question. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to I'm trying to like work the screen and trying to do everything at one time as I'm talking. So um, what is the biggest misconception about sex therapy? Oh, um, the, by far that that the work that I do is is sex work, that I'm an escort, that I'm a prostitute, that I'm that I'm. <laughs> that I do cam work, you know, any kind of sex work that's, I'm a sex <laughs> work. Yeah, or like I am, or that I do um, like Helen Hunt in, in that movie, um, that I'm a, se a sex surrogate and I, or that I watch people have sex. No, none of those things. I am, I'm licensed by the state of Massachusetts. If I were to, in, you know, engage in any of those things, I would risk my licensure, risk my livelihood. So no, I don't do any of those things. <laughs> well, that's, that's good to hear because I was about to give you a list of dudes with broken dicks that you can fix. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that working with people who have erectile challenges uh -huh. is some of my most favorite work to do because these these people come in and they are they are highly motivated to to um, to learn to change to think about things in a different way and i i love working with those people Wait, they're wonderful you can fix it <laughs> nothing's guaranteed she can fix but i do dicks. i do have a pretty good track record with these people i do oh, all right that's what's up okay <laughs> <laughs> they might get Man. a second shot now <laughs> all right just think of all the money i can save instead of buying gas station pills <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> right on. How long have you been doing this work? How long have you been doing this? Uh, this is my fifth year. Is that right? Fifth or sixth year? It's a, it, I came to this career a little later in life, but yeah. Fifth or sixth, can't remember. So um, how has this like quarantine affected like people and their like sexual relationships? Has it like, have they been calling you up and be like, listen, I can't stand this motherfucker and he just want to have sex <laughs> every day. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Has it been like, I just can't stop. Like we just keep going at it. I'm chafed and we just keep going. You know what I mean? How's it affected <laughs> people? <laughs> so it's, it, it is interesting because uh, like I've been still working with my clients uh, using remote telehealth type of platform. And so I'm very grateful for that, that I can continue working during this time. And I've been asking them like, well, you know, how are you doing in the crisis? Or is your desire like ramped up? Is your desire like way down or have you not noticed any change? Generally, people say they're a little less, they're a little tamped down because this is stressful. Most people react to stress right. with like a, le a lessening of desire, decrease of desire. And then there are people, there are a bunch of people who ramp up with their desire as a result of stress. Like, let's just blow off some steam. So <laughs> I, you know, I've, I haven't, haven't heard of too many people having like either a, like a drought or a huge increase. It's just, it's, it has, I, I haven't heard of people like really, it, it has, it, I don't think it's changed all that much. I think people are noticing more like in themselves how, how this is affecting. This is a really stressful time, a really strange and unprecedented kind of time. No one's ever done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just, it's super interesting and wild. It's kind of bananas. It is bananas. Do what about polyamory? You mentioned it before. Is this, you know, to me, I'm an old person now, so uh, or I feel like I am, and I <laughs> keep thinking like, polyamory is this a new? Is this like a new thing? It seems like it's become more and more prevalent, or is it something that's kind of always been there, that we just didn't know about? I do think that in the past decade or so, it has gotten a lot of more, a lot more attention mm -hmm. in. In the cultural discourse, I do think that um, there are plenty of people throughout the ages who have been non-monogamous, just whether they've gotten consent from their partners in order to be non-monogamous or not. That's kind of the question. I think leading up to a certain time, people were just what, you know, like cheating, being, having, doing infidelity type of things. Um, but, you know, all throughout history, we've, there have been people who have been like, no, I, I, they, they manage to, to negotiate that with their partners responsibly and honestly. But now I think it's like really, really, it's very popular, I think. So Wait, have, is, that, is polyamorous? Is that what you said? Yeah. So is that, are we talking sister wives or hoes? Like what, what are we talking about? It's all the same. <laughs> it's a relationship, right? I don't think it's, I don't think it's either sister wives or hoes. I think it's just like, <laughs> well, you're not, you know, like you and I are partners, but also I have this other partner and you, if you, if you want to be friends or something else, then we can talk about that. And also I might have another partner and, you know, like we can all like get along and we can all like talk about it. How often does it work? Do you think? I think it works very well for the people that want it to work. I think what I've noticed is that the people who are able to do this well, they have, they, they just, they are expert communicators. They are talking all the time. Also, there's a certain amount of privilege that you need to have in order to do this because you have to have time in order to spend time with multiple partners and resources, places yeah. to meet with multiple partners. So it does, <laughs> it does speak to a certain level of class. Um, but also I think people who, do this well they have a high level of tolerance for chaos and confusion and they can just they can roll with chaos and drama and like a lot of things happening all at the same time so basically you're talking about lesbians for the most part <laughs> right they seem no. to have much of much more capacity for all of the things you just named than 
Most... Damn, Laura, that was edgy as fuck. I God. know, right? Good Lord. Lord. I've been locked up. Oh. Come on. Oh. Uh, uh, maybe some, I'm like, maybe man. Some kind of here. <laughs> All of Northampton is protesting us right now. Right. I thought Boney was going to be the wild card. You know? <laughs> I have to ask you this question. Have you watched Tiger King? This is like my, my latest obsession. Has everybody... I, I got through one and a half episodes and I tapped out after that. Wow. How about would... everyone else? I didn't watch it. I haven't watched it watch Tiger King. No, you guys got to get on this page because my question what? relates to one of the people in it. Uh, have you, did you get to see Doc Antle at all? Mm -hmm. With so, his multiple wives. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So what is, is that what you consider polyamory or is that something else? I, That's a cult. <laughs> I cannot, I can't speak to what any of those people were doing and I will not, I will not try to even venture a guess. Okay. Um, because those Though that cast of characters in that show was very confusing, yes. very confusing. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> I have a question. Um, okay, and of course this is for a friend. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, so, what if you had a woman who is uh, essentially just uh, celibate, basically, but when she does uh, have some sort of interaction with a man? She would prefer to like, you know, be safe or whatever, keep most of her clothes on and dry hump. Like, what would you say about that? And she's think, a grown woman, you know what I mean? I um, think dry humping is awesome. What's the problem? Thank you. I'll tell See, you. Okay. You're okay, Kim. You're all right. See? Safing. <laughs> well, okay, let me ask you a question. Let's say if you know a friend that happens to be a female who makes people go through like obstacle courses like wipeout. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like you have to like they like to like wear out people's or they like to wear out they like they like to out they like to outlast people's erection. You know what I'm saying? Like they like to like you know if you can't stay hard for 47 and a half minutes you know, without intercourse. <laughs> We're talking about a hypothetical person. We're talking right about a now, hypothetical right? person. Okay. I'm saying, what would you <laughs> tell this person? You know what I mean? You know what? Let me just say something about Tim. His, <laughs> level, his level of annoyance with somebody else, with, with somebody else is doing with their genitals. It's just like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I think we need your help, Brooke. I think we definitely well, need some help. Here's what I want to say. Like, like the, I think, I think being overly focused on how our bodies work or don't work and how, you know, this person is like either their their penis is hard or not hard and the is if the is the vulva and vagina wet or not wet and are the are the boobs perky or saggy or like you know like what saggy? like who cares? I do not care. I do not think that these things mean sex is good or bad. I think that people, you know, people being overly focused on performance and what our bodies do and what they don't do leads us to, it, it doesn't bode well for aging and it doesn't bode well for getting older and being ill or disabled because if we're, if we're lucky enough, we will all be disabled at some point. So, we want to like look towards that, you know, we want to look towards having a sense of humor about, about sex and, you know, not being so worried about this or that, or, you know, if we're doing this right. Do you, do you kind of understand what I'm saying? I get it. And that's excellent. Wow. I'd like to know when I'm going to get shaggy boobs though. I, is that something well, I, that we oh, should expect? Let's um let's refer to them as relaxed instead of oh. saggy. Yeah. Oh, saggy! I they, thought you said shaggy. Oh, shaggy, no. like, shaggy they, boobs. They don't grow fur, I don't think. I mean, maybe they might. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. what, do you, what do you say? What do you have to say about kissing in the mouth? Oh. Mm. I like, love kissing in the mouth. What do you? What you don't? You're not into it, no? Uh, I think it's such a disgusting way to swap, Jeremy. I just feel so Kim, stressed you, out about it. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. 
if you're not into it, then you, then I think there are people you will be able to find who are also not into it. But my friend is telling me though that <laughs> you know this is like a, it's an important part of intimacy. And so well, that's what I'm, that's I don't, basically what I, I want don't to know. want you to feel pressure to do something that you don't want to do. Right, and, like like anal, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kissing in this Lord. Place. Yo, <laughs> Lord, how the hell do you go from ass to mouth? <laughs> Don't go to ass to mouth. mouth. <laughs> Four to five doctors don't recommend that one. That's for sure. I need some prayers right now. I think let us pray. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we found it out about you, Laura. Damn. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you get your answer, though? So kissing is not necessarily something you that your friend wants to do but your other friend does i no i just feel like they're trying to they're trying to like say to me you're missing out on on intimacy like you you're you're holding yourself back from from intimacy and right. so i'm saying is this really a critical piece of intimacy or can we get around it right so 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 the two people involved here do have differing values about what intimacy is about and what the meaning of kissing is about right so that that's a negotiation about values that is like you know how important is it to these two people and is it something that we can negotiate is it something that we can work around or or not you know right. Or do we need to get a concubine, right? For kissing only. <laughs> for, for kissing. For doing everything. Do it, do it all. Yeah. I mean, this is why non-monogamy works for some people. Because, you know, if, if, if one partner wants to kiss and the other partner doesn't want to kiss, but the one partner who wants kissing is really, really, it's like really important to that person, then maybe getting another partner who is into kissing would be a good way of negotiating that. Well said. I don't know. Every there's no there's no one size fits all kind of relationship style here. Okay, gotcha. Oh, I've got a question. Hey folks. Hey. Hey. Um, hey. hey. Um, all right, what was my question? So do you ever have somebody who's like in their process with their therapy like what do you do as a clinician if they don't see something as a problem and you're like I kind of feel like this might be holding you back or like you know you know maybe maybe polyamory isn't right for you but you're really in love right now and you're having a hard time or something like how do you deal with I guess what is your role as the therapist so I, I'm trying to understand your question so if if the if the if the client and the clinician don't agree on the what the cause of the problem is, is that what you're saying? Sure, right. Or basically, like, do you give advice or do you just, or do you like give supportive nodding? Oh, me personally? Oh, that's yeah. a, okay. I understand now. I, I have actually, with certain clients, they have specifically told me that they want advice or they don't want advice. So I try to adhere to what the client is looking for out of the relationship. And it's like, it's not a one, like it's, it's not a one size fits all thing. I have one client who is like, please don't suggest anything. No, that is not what I want from you. So I'm like, okay. So I don't just ask him any ideals. Don't do not give him any ideals. Do not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I just ask questions like, you know, what is that? What, you know, when this happens, how does it feel? Where, how do you hope it's going to go? Like, what do you, what's your goal here? You know? Um, but the advice thing is, uh, it kind of varies. Sometimes, sometimes clients are really feeling lost, you know? So in that case, I'm like, well, how would it be to think about this course of action or how would it be to just contemplate doing that or thinking about that or incorporating this? Does, does, you know what I mean? Does that kind of answer the question there? Oh, hold on. That's my fault. My fault. Uh, yeah, Tim. Yeah, Tim. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so, right. So, like, that's, that's something that always kind of has 
had me hung up about therapy is like, you know, basically if <coughs> if you don't hear what you want, you kind of leave. But oh, I, I've definitely have had uh, clients like that. Like, well, you're not telling me what I want to hear, so I'm out. Yeah, that's fine. And then, but then there's also the line of like, I can't do your work for you anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for sure. So. I mean, half the, a lot of, you know, people are coming in with their, with their, their sex stuff. So I'm not going to be in people's bedrooms. I'm not going to be like asking for updates, you know, like I just can give like suggestions. Like if we're feeling awkward, let's do some exercises. If we, if we want to like, you know, change things up, then sizes. Sorry, go ahead. Exercises. Okay, so there are, did you ever hear of Masters and Johnson from mm -hmm. like way back when? Okay, so they came up with this series of exercises they called Sensate Focus. Mm -hmm. So they would give their all heterosexual, all middle class, all white couples, they would say, go check into a hotel for like three weeks and do these exercises. And of course they got like 90% success rate because these people were like checked into a hotel for three weeks with no, you know, no worries, no kids to take care of, no bills to pay, no jobs to go to. So, but they, they did notice that these exercises, they're like very small incremental steps to reduce awkwardness. So the first step is we practice being the giver and the receiver of touch. So the first one is just like hands and arm, right? Like, like I am like, it's not a massage though. It's different. So if I'm the receiver, then I get to, I get to like feel how that feels. But if I'm the giver, then I get to like touch for my own pleasure. So I'm focusing on texture of skin and temperature of skin and uh, you know, texture of skin. So, and we switch, we switch being the giver and the receiver. So I've kind of gone through, like I've laid out these steps in a more, um, in a less hetero kind of way, like a, incorporating some queer sex into this and being like, you know, you get to design it the way you want, but it's like, it's like the smallest increment. Like the first one is hands and arm. The second one is like shoulder and neck. And we, I try to encourage my clients to do this you know, a set aside like a half hour, three times a week. So do they do them or do they not do them? That's up to them, right? That's up to them. They get to decide whether they want to try to reduce their awkwardness or not. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Brooke, Brooke, how are you doing with all these questions so far? How are you feeling? I'm loving this. Hey, this is, is fun. Is it okay for us to open up the room now? What do you think? Sure. Yes. All right, all in. Don't talk over <laughs> each other. And remember, we're being respectful, <laughs> except for me. I'm completely out of whack. But Nobody pull out their genitals. She's not that kind of. They, yeah, no. <laughs> I hear an amen. Yeah. <laughs> the free show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a different kind of show, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. And I don't know if I'm qualified for that show. <laughs> all right, so I have a question, doctor. Um, let's I'm talk not a about. Doctor, but I appreciate that. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about making a woman squirt. Okay. Now I have a question. My question is, what is the fluid that's coming out? Is that pee? Oh, this is what like, kind of fluid is that? That's what I want to know. Okay, so I cannot answer this question because this is a hotly debated right. question right. that well, no, that like people. You will die on the hill and they will fight to the death about whether this is whether it's dilute urine or whether it's another type of fluid so i i cannot answer that sir and i am sorry well, we, I can well i like making them squirt this. but i just don't know what the fluid is i am so glad that you enjoy it and that you can do this with your partner get a nice towel to, so you won't harm your bed and you won't harm your mattress i don't know what i can't speak to that there's it's still not decided the medical community has not been able to get on the same page about it 
As soon wait, as you wait. find that out, can you please let me know? Because I don't want totally. piss in my mouth. And there you go, Latrell, right out the gate. Latrell, right are you gate. single? I think we're getting a lot of props right. about whether you're single or not. I, 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 I am single. I was married for 25 years. I'm now divorced, but I am very single. Wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. Not wait. for long, dude. Latrell, <laughs> <laughs> wait a second. I just need to know. Do you, are you saying that you know how to make a woman squirt? Is that what you're saying? That is, yes, that's what I'm saying. That okay. is, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what? You can't all squirt, Kim. Do you, do you care if they kiss you or not, Latrell? I love someone that kiss. Oh. I think kissing, <laughs> I, I really think kissing is a part of sex. I really do. I, I think that um, if you find someone that is a great kisser, I consider myself a great kisser. So I do like that to play a parting to what we're going to do. Now, but this book, what about me, piss the mouth? You don't have to kiss right. me. Right, what, what is this after, before or after squirting? I mean, like, what, what is <laughs> this? Like, do you wipe it off? I mean, do you get like a wet nap? I kiss, I mean, well, you kiss me before <laughs> so we can go until I can start into everything else. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it, Laura. You knew what this was going to get into. You knew okay. it. That's uh, why I was so <laughs> holding it back. Oh, all right, all right. Flying out the gate. <laughs> you was the one that came. Laura was the one okay. who came out the gate with. So, what about sucking toes? <laughs> what about it? What about it? it? Um, I think that's a, a nice piece that a man can do to a female. I'm all about pleasing the female, really. That's what my okay. whole thing is. Okay, yeah. So, so do you think that is really, stim do it, does it really stimulate the woman's mind? Yeah, that is yes, completely, yes. that is completely <laughs> dependent on the woman you were speaking with. <laughs> you know Every what, Brooke, different. You can send Latrell a bill at the end of the show if right. you'd like to it. <laughs> Helping him out, helping a brother out. Yo, uh, see, I'm from so Massachusetts. Freak, I'm from Massachusetts, is, so I feel you. Doc. Latrell is a freak. Latrell is just like, freak, yo. that's the only reason why he tuned in. He want people to know that he a freak. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I tuned in because be, I heard uh, that. I tuned I'm in because I heard that there was a doctor online, <laughs> so I wanted to see what the doctor knows this because I be consider a, myself a, a sex doctor too. Yeah. Just I don't have Clearly. the license. I mean, I, I think like you know, this. I think this is a thinly veiled personal ad for Latrell right now. Right. You know? Not so thinly, actually. Latrell, <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna come out like this, man. I, I wouldn't, Laura. I'm sorry. I oh, it's know. okay. We're all getting to know each other. This is what it's about, right? Well, this is an adult, um, X-rated, um, no, show not tonight. X-rated. No, not no, no. no. <laughs> Keep your clothes right. I got the answer for this. You know, somehow they all gonna blame me for this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just want to say that that you know it is not. You know, we are trying to find information yes. from a qualified, you know, uh, person. You know, with answers. Not, you know, we're not trying to find like sex tips. Like, what is the best play? You know, now if I do the, I, the, the butterfly lotus asking. position, will I? <laughs> I feel I'm like your answer trying, would just I'm be not, if you like the position, do it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not reckon. trying to promote anything. I'm not trying to promote anything. I was just asking the doctor. I really want to know what kind of fluid comes out of there right. when you make a woman a squirt. Yeah. I really don't know if it's key or if it's some, it. something else. I just really want to know. I always wanted to know the answer. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't speak to that yeah. because it's so, it's so hotly debated still. Yeah. You know, gotcha. I, I recommend whenever I have a question like this, I always go back to the Prince music and try to find my answers there because I usually <laughs> he would have an answer. He has a lot of answers. I feel like. Prince, Prince right? Prince. You know what? You know, you know, purple. you know about you know something about the women I date. If I put on Little Red Corvette and they don't clap at the chorus, I don't date them. You know what I mean? That's the well, test. I That's like the test. Little Red Corvette. I, I prefer <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass. I prefer Teddy Pendergrass. Oh, Turn off the oh, lights. Old school. Okay. That is okay. some old school. All right. All right. Me, hey, me and Terrell get ready to go in our own our own chat room. Yep. <laughs> look, look me don't up. Worry, don't worry, he be back. <laughs> I didn't realize we were actually going to be connecting people this is, way, but I'm so happy. That's good. Is he old enough for you, Kim? Oh, Lauren, Lauren, you went sideways. 
You got an A on B card. Y'all is out. So Brooke, I do have to making a love connection. I want to see this one. I do have one question for you, Brooke. Yeah, Tim. What is that Funko Pop behind you? Oh yeah. So um, so this is um not my favorite Jeff Goldblum, but it's the only Jeff Goldblum. It's uh from Jurassic Park. Jeff Goldblum, the Ian Malcolm. Yep. What What is your favorite Jeff Goldblum? I guess now that we're on the subject. Well, I prefer him older. I think like now he is like the silver fox type, and I'm really I like that very very much. <laughs> he's very he's very young in that movie. It's not my favorite. No fly. So, no no fly. Huh. No sure. the fly. <laughs> that was a great movie. <laughs> was a good I have a good question for you, Doctor. Uh-oh. What would you I, say? I call me couple? Doctor. It's hilarious. Okay, go what ahead. Would you, <laughs> what would you say? to a couple that came and sat before you and the husband he has been diagnosed with diabetes yes and we we know that diabetes sometimes can mess with the man's erection what sure. would you advise the wife to do would she be patient with him mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. okay so this i love this dynamic that you are describing it's one of my most favorite dynamics to work with with couples because he has you know a medical condition that's affecting his body she has options of how she feels about it right she's probably mm-hmm. like oh he doesn't find me attractive or oh they're there honey like a little too coddling motherly about it or like maybe she's just trying to ignore the whole thing and getting frustrated so there are medicines out there that depending on the medical issue, I don't know how diabetes Mm -hmm. medicine, I don't know how insulin reacts with Mm -hmm. um, the vasodilators like Viagra, Levitra, and Cialis. Maybe, maybe not. I fully, I think if we can incorporate those things in order to give that boost of confidence, then sure, why not? Um, They, I, I want everyone to calm down about it. I want to, I want to encourage couples like this to um, have an open mind about a, a soft penis. We can play with a soft penis. People oh. can enjoy a soft penis. <laughs> I know. <laughs> See? <laughs> I, ha- yes. I have wait, another wait. question yes. on top of that. Okay, wait okay. Minute, what, if, what if the man's <laughs> wife or girlfriend does not like giving head. What do wow. you say? I, feel I like think that I think that's my people, tribe. <laughs> people don't people don't have to engage in behaviors that they are not comfortable with. Way to go, Brooke. You wouldn't so, even say try it. You wouldn't even say try it at least one time. So if someone has a reason that they don't want to try it, then I would just believe in that reason, whatever it is. You know, some people, some people see it as like, um, you know, some people have trauma, so they might not want to do things because of things that happen during sexual trauma. All right. Well, I have a question. Why she has to have trauma when, if she likes her man to do it to her, she don't want to do it back to him. Oh, okay. So we're, it's a quid pro quo thing for you now? Is that what's happening? (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm just asking the question. That's all. Oh, okay. So I would be interested, you know, if if there was like any chance that she might be interested in doing that, then maybe we could explore that. But if people say a hard no on something, gotcha. I respect the hard no. Okay. Or a soft no in this case. <laughs> Stopped. That was good. But it was, no. it was nice, Bob. You should tell that couple, though. Close it, Bob. <laughs> Buddy, go home. <laughs> you Shut should tell down. that couple that was having trouble, though, that one where he's, he's a diabetic and she doesn't like to do shit. I think that she should basically withhold his insulin until he gets his shit together. Right? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> wow, that is harsh. Okay. <laughs> Brutal group. Your pancreas. Brutal. Out of here, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, where do we go from there? I don't even know. <laughs> no, I will say though. I just to return to the original question. This is like a serious dynamic that I see is very, very common. 
And I do, I, I just, I want to calm, my job in that situation is to calm everyone down because we're feeling resentment, we're feeling disappointment, we're feeling sadness that the body isn't working the way it used to. And, you know, it, there are also like meanings that we have about what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman. And, you know, like these things are all very rich and full of meaning for people. And that, and I love having, I love delving into these things and like talking about them and investigating them with people. People say things to each other in these discussions that they've never said. And I get to ask questions that they've never been asked. So it is like, it's lovely. It's wonderful. Now, do you, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Go do you um, teach them how to touch one another? With the sensate focus exercises that I was referring to before, okay. if, we, if we are awkward, there is like that really, but you know, people come in beyond that and they're like, they, you know, my partner touches me too lightly and it tickles or my partner touches me too hard and it hurts. So, you know, we get to negotiate that. Oh, yeah. but I thought you said that sensei touching was only for white people that go stay in a hotel, no? You hate it like that? <laughs> no, it's, it used it to be, it's no longer. I've, I've kind of modified it to be like for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's also nice as a cover. It's so nice as a cover. Mira, it even blends with the, with the thing. Oh, oh, you're talking. Talking. Wanda's talking. Oh, Wanda's yeah. talking. Okay. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Y'all doing great. <laughs> Lauren, you you had a question, Lauren. Do you want to say it? Are you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, who was describe your ideal client? Oh, my ideal client is anyone who is coming in to see some real change, Ooh, and is yeah. and is interested in maybe being challenged and letting go of some old ideas and doing some hard investigation. Um, but that's it. Like that's, this is why um, penis owners who are having erectile troubles are often, often like my favorite clients because they are motivated. They're really motivated. They're like, yes, I will read the book. Yes, I will do mindfulness meditation. Yes, I will, I, will, I will think about things in a different way. We can do the reframe. So anyone, anyone who really wants change. Wow. Hey, can I add you something? We have sure. somebody who needs to mute their mic. It's a little loud right now. It sounds sure like they're building some shit. Yeah, what are they doing? Like <laughs> around. Um, um, uh, what, so what happens when, you know, you are with somebody and... Um, then he starts to disrobe and he brandishes his penis. And it's not something that you like. He, he what? I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you said. Yeah, I missed it too. Say it he again, like, Kim. So you're with somebody and you're in the, about to have an intimate moment and then he pulls his penis out or whatever and then you, you have, like, you don't like it for whatever oh, reason. So you a size queen. Oh, did Latrell okay. just come for me? Right, right. right. I just... <laughs> You're gonna mute Latrell. Latrell, you get like a six comment limit. Yeah, you know what I mean? You gotta get a room chance, man. I'm saying <laughs> Latrell was just on fire. Get it? Just give us a second. We get back his to own you. show. He right. can do his own show right now. He's trying to get a spinoff right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Somebody, Kim, I think you know when you watching it live and so his feedback. You, you um. If you are, if you are in an intimate moment and you you want to decide that that intimate moment Excuse should me. not continue, you have always the option of saying no thanks. Uh, I either need a break or I'm not interested in going further. You consent is something that we can we can give and we can take back at any moment. Okay, Does so that, there's no concern there for, for hurting the other person's feelings or whatever. You're just like, you know what? I'm not, you know, I'm good. Well, do you, do you think it would be better for you to go through with something that you're not into? And kind no. of, yeah. So, you know, part of, part of being emotionally intelligent and aware and mature 
is that we can maybe handle some disappointment and some rejection in our lives. And if someone, if, if, if this hypothetical person was given a choice of being like, well, if I find out that they're not attracted to me, would I rather them just say no thanks or would I rather them do something that they're not interested in doing and then looking at me unfavorably? You know, they would probably choose, I would take, I would take the rejection, that little hurt over like, no, I don't want someone to be like compromising themselves, you know? Right. Okay. I have a question. Sure. Now, have you heard anything or what is like the wildest thing that, that you ever heard that made, that just like made you like cringe, like, you know, like, is this a thing? Like you had to sit back and like poise yourself, like I'm a professional, I'm mm. a professional. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like what, what, you know, I mean, is there anything that ever came up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have had some clients who have been engaging in non-consensual behaviors. Like, okay. yeah, like, um, uh, yeah, just uh, filming people without their knowledge. Oh, um, and yeah. actually, I did have a client who was in, in a criminal case and was um, coming to therapy in order to gain my testimony, which I denied. I denied him. I said, if you put me on the stand, I will not be helping your case at all. So please don't do that. Please don't put me in that position. You don't want me. So yeah, that's kind of, that's how I would answer that question. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of, that was high on the ick factor for it me. Got dark. It yeah. Dark. Sorry. I, I always thought you was going to be like body painting, body painting or something <laughs> like that. Oh, body painting is lovely. That it, you know what? That's my fetish right there. Body <laughs> painting. It. Not, not, right. not like the muddy, not like the muddy stuff you get from like amazon.net. Okay. But you know what I mean? Like when you like, like you know, it, you know, it's like, look like you got on clothes. I mean, very professionally done. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's my thing right there. Painting well, your clothes? Lovely. No, no, like. Painting on your skin as right. if there are clothes. They look like uh, clothes or. Um, didn't like Demi Moore like do a, a photo shoot like that, Tim? Yeah. Demi Moore, didn't she do something Lady like Gaga that? Like with a tuxedo? Mm. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. Whew, that, that, of course that, you like that. Like, that's beautiful. Who wouldn't like that? We oh, only amazing. like it if they know the, the lyrics, right? To Little Red Corvette, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> what the clap. <laughs> right. If you don't do the clap, that's the test. I'm like, what, waiting? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so, yeah. Wow. Wow. This has been an incredible show so far. Like, I really appreciate what you're, you're, you're able, you're answering all the questions. Does anybody else have any major questions that they won't be able to forgive themselves for if they don't ask tonight? You know you're talking to Terrell, right? Yeah, I know. He's, right. <laughs> he's muted, I know. No, he's back. You he's back, back, you back, he's, Terrell. He's back, Terrell. <laughs> Latrell. It's Latrell. about time, y'all. It's Latrell, back. guys. Not Terrell, Latrell. <laughs> Latrell, Latrell. Your name's straight. Well, he got Terrell down. I'm just looking, you know, I'm terrible with names. Sorry, my bad. Um, so, what if you got this friend, right? <laughs> that you know they need to have sex and they bug you about it all the time. <laughs> and you're like, why don't you just go do it? Just go get a release. And they got like 50 million excuses why they don't do it. But by the conversations they want to, what, if, you know, what advice would you give to that person? Because they, you know, they're getting on your nerves. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, wow, right. what are we talking about? Too, okay? Wow. <laughs> I don't have that many excuses. Mm. <laughs> I got a million, yeah. <laughs> so maybe the fun of that is in the complaining about it. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's the price of admission that we pay to have this, uh, you know, to be like thinking about sex and talking about it, not actually having it, but to be like maybe the complaining is the turn on there. Maybe. What do you say to a couple that? does not mind having someone else to join them in the bedroom. I would say that that's lovely as long as everyone is on board and consenting. I have no problem with that. I'll watch y'all. <laughs> oh yeah. Kim will watch that movie. <laughs> she will watch that movie. As long as she doesn't have to kiss anybody. Right. Not going to kiss anybody. Right. <laughs> so I just want to point out that this group has has shown me like such a beautiful diversity of sexuality 
of what we want and what we don't and the things we like and the things we don't like and the questions that we have. It's just, it's been, this is lovely. I, I love talking with all of you because I, you know, I get to, like, this is why I love doing this work because everyone has such different ideas of what is fun and what is not, and we get to investigate it a little bit. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for like sharing a little bit. It's really, really cool. You do it well. Now, are you teaching anywhere as well? Are you giving lectures where we can find you out in the no, world? No, but I've been thinking about it. I have been thinking about it. Like I was, I've, I mean, who knows what's going on with this, with this crisis that we're in right now, if we'll ever be together in a room with other people again. But I have been thinking about like maybe doing a, asking to be a, like an adjunct professor somewhere. I think that would be fun. I'd sign up for that class. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I have what, one what, are you optimistic that we will touch each other at when this thing happens? <laughs> oh, I hope so, man. Woo, hey. this is tough. I'm looking to be touched after all this. Okay, everyone take But notes. I have Let's one try. question for you sure. before you leave. Okay. What do you think about pansexual if a woman is dating a guy that's pansexual what's your thoughts on that i think that that's lovely i think that you know within pansexuality is the desire to be with someone of of a different gender mm -hmm. so i do do you mean like are you worried that the partner will have some judgment about pansexuality is that what you're saying I think that anyone that's in a relationship with someone that's pansexual will always have a thought of like, mm -hmm. am I not enough for the mm -hmm. person that I'm dealing with to have someone else um, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you might be attractive to? Right. So this is the thing that bisexual people also get, get put into this kind of box as well. So mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, people are attracted to more than one gender or all genders does not mean that we are not able to maintain a monogamous relationship. Is that if that's what we are agreeing to, if we are in a relationship and we agree to the terms, just because the, the scope of attraction is wide. I mean, you could say this about anyone, mm -hmm. even if, if a straight person, you know, might be attracted, like, like if, if I were to be straight, if I were like, you know, if I'm with, Let's say I'm I'm with a a partner who is 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 male. I might be attracted to other males also. You know, like mm -hmm. I might be attracted to to other people. Mm -hmm. The who we are attracted to is a separate question than if we want to be in a committed relationship with but a single partner or a few partners. But if the man that you're dealing with was attracted to other males. Mm -hmm. How would you think that a woman would feel about that? There is some cultural stigma about that, and I understand that, but I personally don't hold that to be any different than all the attractions that people have regardless. So, you know, I personally identify as bisexual, so I think other people who are bisexual and pansexual are really attractive to me, so okay. that, would, that would probably fly with me really well. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I would want to be involved with other people or have mm -hmm. multiple partners unless I were into that, which is gotcha. not what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I, I guess it's difficult to answer for an entire group of people, right? It's everybody is different. Totally. I yeah. just want to yeah. separate out the, the idea of commitment within relationship to attraction. Yes. Those are two different things. Yeah. All right. Let me, let me join. Do we have any uh, questions on Facebook that anybody wants to, you know, that did we check that? I've been checking. I haven't seen okay. any yet. Um, I just want to just want to yeah. give them their time, not neglect that. Of course. Ask them now, guys, if you got them. Uh, we have a couple more minutes. I wanted to ask Brooke about your practice and if somebody felt like they wanted to come and see you, what would they have to do to get to you at this point? So um, my practice right now is full and I, I would, I, I don't really keep a waiting list, um, but if people wanted to find me, they could okay. look me up on brooknorton.com. Great. Yeah, brooknorton.com, and we'll post that somewhere below. Thanks. Excellent. Uh, any more thoughts from the gallery before we sort of tie this one up for the night? It's okay. been so cool. 
Brooke, mm -hmm. um, Brooke, I have yes, to sir. ask you probably one of the most important questions of the of the night. Of course. <laughs> how did you <laughs> how did you like the flyer? <laughs> Oh God. oh God! I didn't repost that flyer. Did you notice? I didn't repost that flyer. Oh, you did. Like, oh, you did. Uh -oh. I loved it. I'm turning everybody into cartoons. I'm turning everybody into cartoons. Oh boy! It was it was an adorable caricature that I was like, oh. <laughs> Wait, the thing so about Brooke, caricatures are never flattering. Somehow, Brooke, did you you said you didn't repost it, or you did? You did I used, not. Okay. I used the image of of Laura and Tim. Thank on you. The, okay. On the, <laughs> I did we not. fight. We Another fight. extremely <laughs> flattering photo. Yes. We, we fight over <laughs> these flyers. We fight over these flyers. And he doesn't listen to me. So thank you. <laughs> Wait, what, what was she did she didn't repost that shit. Bam. Bam. <laughs> Bam. Oh, wait, wait, this is what, oh, y'all want to gang up on a brother? I see, I see how it is. Oh, your posse is supposed to be deep now, huh? Oh, wait, 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 we have, we do have a question. Um, okay. After a month of not having sex, how would you reintroduce intimacy in your relationship? Oh, let's talk. Talk first. Just shove it let's in. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, Kim. I would say, you know, in a relaxed moment where people are feeling warmly towards each other and we're not too tired and we're not hungry to say, you know, we've, we haven't, we haven't touched in so long. How can we do this? I'm feeling awkward, you know, to be a little vulnerable about it. I don't know what to do. I'm nervous. And then, you know, you can just have a conversation that might hopefully evolve into something more. I have a friend who has not had sex. I know she has not had sex in about 20 years. Mm -hmm. Is she now a virgin again? Virginity yes. is a social construct. So if she thinks that she is a virgin again and she's into that idea, then she no. is probably a virgin again. <laughs> her, her vagina's dried up. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop talking about me. <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I think I'm with swirls on this, and I can't give you that one. I can't. Is she a virgin? <laughs> is, is that how that works? You know what I'm saying? So virginity is, uh, we, could, we could spend a whole other hour just on this. So I know we're almost out of time, but. Don't even introduce that to the world. Don't even put that thought out there if she thinks she's, if, you know, if you are, you ain't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. This whole goddess is about it. God, the only thing to give a direct, direct virgin, answer about. Man. Oh. Makes sense. All right, people, last words. What do we got? Hot take on Esther Perel, go. Oh, she's my favorite, favorite, favorite. If I could have Esther Perel in a in a pop, I would I would totally have Esther Perel. She's one of my patron saints. Love her. I still think you should have an Earth Girls Are Easy era of Jeff Goldblum because he is the magic sex alien. Oh, I forgot one. about that movie. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you for that. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Lauren thank knows you. all that weird obscure shit. <laughs> Well, I want to say thank you to everyone for having me. This has been lovely. And thank Yay. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome job. Any U.S. citizen returning to the United States will be subject to up to 14 days of mandatory quarantine. Okay. We, we got that vaccine. Third eye clean, we visine. Dancing off the top rope, we dug the off them high beams. Running hard like track meets. Debutants and back seats. Nine cents for player feet. My piss desperate vibes. Double parts on planet Mars. They surf the net. We surf the stars. Quarantine in Zanzibar. Breathing on the masses. Paper like Onan.